Okay, today I'm going to do a fast wash and I'm going to do a winter scene and I'm probably going to do it in 10 minutes for the students that aren't here so you can see what, uh, what I'm doing today. We have a large brush, a hack brush. I'm going to start with having my brush where it's a little bit damp with my solvent and picking up my colors and going. And I'm deciding the wash is going to be two different kind of blues. So I have a cobalt blue and an ultramarine white. And I'm just going to dust that on the side here. I'm going to go a little bit darker. Give it some kind of contrast. I'm going to move that over. And as you know, I'm going to take my rag, I'm going to smooth it out. I'm going to use the same brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue just to give it a little bit of contrast and a spot of a lizard crimson. I'm going to make it a little bit of a purple and I'm going to move that color in here. I'm going to pick up a little bit more Lizzie Crimson. I'm going to move that color in here. And I want to see some of the Lizzie Crimson there. So a little bit more. So I have my contrast in my sky. And again, uh, my brush is still dirty. And I'm going to move it in here. And a tiny bit over here and down to the horizon line. Make sure you're pushing a little bit on that brush. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rag. I'm going to smear this clean. And I'm going to go over it with a little bit of cobalt blue and white. I still haven't clean my brush. I'm going to lightly drag that. Then I'm going to do one more covering with my Elysian Crimson and an Ultramarine Blue. I'm going to bring it again in the middle. I'm just going to build it up. When I'm doing the washes, I want to spend as fast amount of time on it so you can try it at home to perfect your washes. If you have the right kind of brush, it's a little bit easier. Again, dry rag. And you're just blending this. You're going to put clouds on top so it's not really going to matter at this point. But we want to have some kind of motion in the sky. I'm going to take another brush bristle brush, and then I'm going to bring some more hobo blue into here on top, and I'm just going to have my clouds, and I'm just putting them on top as markers of where they're going to be thicker. I'm just using the edge of the brush, and maybe we have some more clouds down here. We can go back later and fix the clouds again. We're just putting edges of where these clouds and where these markers should be. Still using the same brush. Going back. And if I want them to be a little bit more stronger, I'm just pressing harder. Okay, we're gonna leave that there. That's perfect for now. Gonna go back with the other brush. And I'm going to add some cobalt and mix ultramarine blue together and a little bit of a lizard crimson with a tiny spot of white. And I'm going to go over here. I'm going to bring in some contrast with a little bit of darker areas. I'm swirling my brush in a round pattern with these little circles like this. And I'm just doing this so we can have a very dramatic sky. And I'm blending it. So now I have this blending going on. You can do it. 
kind of in three minutes. Then for practice at home. Okay, and we'll just put a little bit here, maybe some make-believe clouds over here. And we got this going on. We're gonna cover these with trees anyway. So we have this really dramatic sky. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna put a cover down here. I'm using the same brush and I'm gonna pick up some white on the edge of my brush like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this. There we have the canvas. A mistake, I got some yellow in my brush. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna smooth this out. And then have this. And then I'm going to use another bristle brush about a six, and I'm gonna go in and I'm going to pick up ultramarine blue, some cobalt blue, some alizarin crimson, and more ultramarine blue, and a spot of Mars black. And I'm going to put in, let's make believe that there's gonna be a mountain here. Just going to put in this mountain color here. Don't have to have it that exact as you remember. When you're putting in the mountains, you're going to change the color anyway. I'm going to pick up some white. It's going to be a tint now. And the reason I'm doing that is it's going to work perfectly with the color of the sky above. They both have white in them. I'm going to pick up more white and a little bit of red. And I'm going to blend that wet on wet. And now I have three different colors, white, blue underneath, and this uh, kind of purple mountain going on top. It's a nice contrast. And it brings out the clouds. I'm going to drag this all the way over here. And then I have this. So this is kind of at this point. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this area, this bottom area, with white, but I left this empty here. So I'm going to use a new brush, and now I'm going to bring in some pink. And this time I'm going to change the colors and pump it up a little bit more, so I'm going to use a brighter red. I'm going to use a cad red instead of a lips and crimson. I'm going to take the tip of my cad red, and I'm going to mix it in some white. I have a spot of purple in here, and I'm just going to press with the brush to just kind of blend this area in here. And I'm going to pick up some more white on the edge of my brush. I'm going to keep doing that until it blends. So now, within seven minutes, you'll have your wash. You have the wash for the sky done, and then you're just blending in this light color. And you want to do it while it's wet, if it's oils. You can see how I'm working around each color. So I'm not having trouble with the colors blending. I'm doing it with the acrylics. I can wait, or I can just blend it together. But it's better to have your palette all ready to go. You can blend the colors on canvas, but you're not going to, it would take a longer amount of time if you don't have the colors ready. That's why I tell my students to have swatches and have them ready to go. You want to get this soft kind of effect, like if you had, uh, I don't know, on the horizon line, you have this, okay? In all of this, you'll be done in like maybe 11 minutes. And then the bottom, we're just going to put white, okay? Doing some more white here. I'm going to have the white, and we're going to maybe put the white on thick. With these oils, you know, we have to let this dry. So I'll show you what the next stage is after this. We'll let this dry for now.
we have this. Okay, the next step that we're going to do is we're just going to take a small brush. I'm going to use a little fan. And we're just going to start now doing the trees, which is going to be an umber brown. If you don't have it, you can mix uh, a little bit of your V green or your phalo green and a little bit of your cad red and we're going to do these sides of the tree we're just going to make impressions and we're going to do it in a couple of minutes you mix it with your palette knife if you want ahead of time or your brush again little fan brush and i'm just going to put these trees in here just where they're going now Going to go back, they're going to mix with the color underneath. I really don't care about that at this point. Okay, and it's just kind of laying down your foundation. And you're only doing this to the areas I left these negative spaces in between because there's going to be foliage on the tree. Okay, so you'll need to see all of the areas that the tree is taking, just the areas where you're going to have these uh, these leaves and then you're going to move and maybe you have more trees here, I don't know, another tree here. Again, if I was doing this at home, I'd be taking a long amount of time. I'm just doing this in five minutes here. And then we're going to be bringing some more trees down here. It's interesting if you kind of break them into the horizon line. Okay. And now within about 15 minutes, try it at home. Should be at least up to this point where you have these trees and you're going like that. Right? So you have wash and you have that the next thing is you just can't leave these spaces in between. You could go in with different color browns. So sometimes what I do is if I wanted to make the tree more interesting, I might mix an orange in here. And the reason why I'm adding orange to these uh, tree trunks is I'm always thinking about what the contrast is going to be with the sky. In other words, I could leave this purple which would be almost kind of a monochromatic, or I could go over it with a second color with a brown. The cool thing is the more that you go over the trees, you're going to change the shape and the stroke, and you're not going to have these total lines. And it only takes two minutes to do. And then you might go in with another color, like a gray, depending on what kind of tree you want to make. And you're only moving that brush in certain areas where you want to uh, put in those highlights so where the light is going to be falling. The most important thing about making trees is thinking about where the light is going to be falling. Okay, because that's going to be quite different on one side. Now you have these trees and they have all these different colors in them. Okay, and the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to put some branches on top and I'm going to do that with the white. So we're kind of at this point. The only reason I stopped it is I'm trying to get my white open. If I can. Maybe I can't. I'm going to ask a student that's stronger than me to open the white paint. <laughs> Somebody know how to open this white paint? Sorry, I'm away. Just had to open my white pen. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a round brush here. It's like a number six. And I'm just going to dab it into 
uh, my paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you different ways. I showed you before how you can have the brush and you're doing that dabbing moment, dabbing, where you're making, you know, the foliage. But if it's winter time, right, some of the trees are missing maybe their, uh, their leaves. So you can do it with a round brush, I'll show you. You don't have to have a fan brush. You just have to, you know, press lightly. You're going to do it a couple of times, and we're just going to cover some of these areas really fast. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back with our fan brush here. We're going to pick up more white, or we're going to load it on the edge of the brush. And I like using the fan brush because I can push hard, and when I turn my arm in different directions, look at how I can get all of these leaves super fast on the tree. And I don't have to be doing it with a little small brush. When you're doing it with a small brush, it'll take all day doing these little small lines. But you just have to keep turning your brush in different directions to kind of get this area of these leaves on the tree. And the most important thing is you don't want these strokes to be too large if you're pressing on them. You're going to go back with another color. But in other words, I'm just using the edge of the brush. And I can build this up super fast or as slow as I want. Now I'm doing it fast because I'm in the classroom. Okay. If I was home, I would take a little bit more time with this. And I just want to show you what ends up happening when we start working with that tree, just with the fan brush. Okay. So students at home, they, that's going to be a homework assignment. But you're going to just do it. You can do it, like I said, with the round brush or the fan brush, but you just have to pick up the momentum when you're thinking about the shape and you're just pressing. And you kind of want to do this for the tree. I'm just doing this for this large area. I'm going to go back and build this up. But for now, this is going to be like my point of how I'm going to start building it up. Okay, you can see it gets a little bit more like that. Okay, and if you had a small fan brush, which one of my students is using now, you could go and you could pick up the white too, and I'll show you. I'm going to load it on both sides, and I could go and I'm going to start, you know, using this for this tree. Okay, but I prefer using my larger brush. You just don't, you just can't press as hard. And we're just going to make the shapes for the trees now. And then we can go back and we can add other stuff. Now we're just making these like little shapes. And you see how I'm doing it so fast? I'm really not paying attention. I think the thing is when students go little by little and they try to do these shapes, they get nervous and they don't want to take a chance on doing this on the canvas because they say it's not going to look realistic. The thing is it's never going to look realistic in the beginning because you're going to have to build it up. Okay. So this would be the stage of the second stage of putting on the white and building this up real fast. Doesn't look like much now and it shouldn't. It's just our first cover. And you still want to leave that blue in the sky. I'm going to show you how we're going to soften this. So at that point, we're only up to here. Okay? Then what we can do is we're going to start going in with other colors, like maybe a little bit of blue in the white, where we have these shadows. And we're going to start, I'm going to put the shadows down here, but they're drastically going to change because we're going to put a little bit of black in them. When I'm thinking about the light, you have three ways you can do a shadow. You can do it as a contrasting color. You can do it as the same color that it reflects, or you can do it as a combination of the color 
that uh, that the surface is on. So if the ground was brown, right, and the tree was green, it could be a combination of green, green and brown. It could just be a dark brown or a dark green, or it could be something different like a purple. You could mix a purple and a yellow and have that color brown. And what I'm doing is I'm just dragging the fan brush and I want to bring, the most important thing that I'm doing is I'm just putting where I think that these shadows are going to be. Of course, this is going to change drastically when I put the white on top, but I do need a reference point. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm just dragging this down here. And this is what we have and 20 minutes in, and this is what you would call just setting up your canvas before you're deciding to uh, work on it as far as just having the wash done and blocking out the areas of the color for a winter scene. And now we can go in and now we can start putting in the details. That'll be the next video, and I'll do that later for you. Okay.